way to start the morning. Nice little sun tower to set right there on uh, Wadi Head at Fraser Island. My little uh, tower angler 10 foot has done me proud again. It's a 15 pound braid and the Kingfisher snook spoon. The big Ultra Valley, we'll try and catch some bait this morning to start them out. Some uh, big GTs waiting out there. Okay, good morning viewers. Um, so we're here at a point uh, just off Fraser and uh, yesterday we had great success with the three spot Pompano. So it's early, sun just came out. The guys got a couple of GTs off the front, little GTs for bait. So we kept some uh, live dart from yesterday and we're gonna put one out hopefully looking for a Kuta, a Kingi uh, or a GT and uh, I'm sure the sharks are not going to leave this alone as well. Just take a look at the scenery behind us. Uh, it's unbelievable, the sun's just sticking its head out there. The sea's fairly flat and uh, I think we can expect some, some action. What a fantastic morning. Better than mowing the lawn, that's, that's the truth. Guys, unbelievable. The well is probably 40 meters from us here from the side. It's really, really spectacular. Now, gents, this is a front row VIP seats to the creation. Um, unbelievable the things we've seen Yeah, We saw yesterday a dugong coming past here, whales, um, big skates, a manta ray. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it with a camera, but everything from 30 meters up to 100 meters coming past you, unbelievable sightings with a kuta, shot of kuta, some sharks swimming in. As it gets a bit lighter and the sun gets a bit higher, this water is crystal clear and you can see pretty much everything. Now behind us here is a, is a very high hill and if you get on there, You've got a bird's eye view of what's happening in the water here and the water being so crystal clear you see the most unbelievable things. You work it slowly above the eyes, like that. And you just tighten it nicely there so the circle can carry it. I'm going to cut that off. I should have brought a side cutter down. And I put cable and two piano wire just to make sure with the cutter there's hooks everywhere. And uh, I don't make it too tight so you restrict the swimming. And that one will stick in there. Okay, I'm gonna get him back in the pool. When you, when you start slide bait fishing as they call it in Australia or sliding like we know it in South Africa you have to use essential part of your equipment is a, a grapnel sinker what's referred to as a grapnel it's like a literally an anchor it can unclip to make it easier for you to get it loose when it sinks into the sand but this is essential that you don't pull your sinker the whole time closer when you're shaking that fish out it allows you to then slide even bigger baits then you've got your stopper, your slide stopper, which is a ring and a swivel, power swivel, tied to your leader. And uh, then, yeah, I use a, a much thinner piece of nylon to your sinker and you tie a little knot in there to give it a weakness. So should you get stuck when you're fighting a big fish, it just pops off right there. That's your weak point that you make. And then when you're casting, to make sure you don't pop this while you're casting, if you're going to have a good cast. Your sinker will just hook on that and you cast like that. As it hits the water, it will release. Now, this is a Poseidon prototype rod, which we're testing. It's uh, double up for spinning as well as multiply. You can use it for both. And you put a bait out to like that. I'm using a Saltiga 50 uh, HA. And now, how we spool this is, there's about 600 meters of 50 pound braid in the bottom as you're backing. Now you don't cast braid on these reels. 
and on top you put 200 250 meter top shot which is a 0.55 millimeter monofilament we use bright yellow so you can see where your line is if there's a couple of anglers you're busy fighting a fish or you just want to see where the lines are it makes it a lot easier to see your line your leader is normal color whichever you prefer and uh, that's pretty much the, the, the summary of that I'm going to put the sinker out now this allows you to put the sinker either far or a bit closer depending where you want to fish it's not about just getting it as far as possible in certain areas there's channels you'll see rips you can put it in the beginning of the rip and uh, get your bait right there so that, that whatever if it's a smelly bait or a live bait especially with smelly baits it will take the smell out for you so you still got to fish structures not just blind casting as far as you can but let's get this out let's get the dart out and see what happens another thing very important when you're on the rocks here you get a lot of sandals a lot of different shoes boots like these with the stretchies like the kingfisher shova boots tested and proven over years and years to have the least slip and the best grip on the rocks remember that least slip best grip so that you don't go home in an ambulance or even worse so make sure you put safety first when you're on the rocks here run around run around you have to maybe fight a big fish very important to wear the right footwear the best way to hook this up remember it's always facing towards the sea it's called a non-return the whole purpose of this clip is it can't return on your line coming back and wash back out it doesn't matter what the fish does in the waves it eventually helps you and you use your rod to get it down to your sinker now good at least a hundred shakes to get get it down and then you wait a minute or so and you shake it again to just get it over your leader knot make sure it's hanging on your leader and then you're done so how we start very simple you flick over your reel and put your thumb on so it doesn't overspin you just grab your line hold it flick it on it's done now yeah very easy point to slide i'm close to the front you can wait for a wave if there's a rock in front wait for a wave to come onto it and then slide it down so you'll literally just reel it lift the tip of your rod and then it's going and then in the beginning see you use your tip action and that will take it out much much faster and the strokes just get like Dean said strokes get longer the further you go to move that bait and with a rod like this where most of your action is at the tip it's a fast taper high quality modulus graphite which uh, make, makes it a quick recovery a rod like this with that soft tip it's got a lot more action to slide it so you can really use that action don't shake bigger strokes when the slide is still close because you can wrap it by flicking it too much and too hard when it's still close to your rod it can wrap and then you have to reel everything in again and start all over so now you can start with slightly longer strokes taking them longer and if you get tired with your arm here's a nice way of doing it hold it like that and when the guys really get tired put it on the shoulder and do it this way so there's so many ways to actually just get your bait out now what I'm doing so I'm just connecting nicely to the sinker you see it spring back you have to get that connection so that the monofilament stretches and then takes your clip a bit further you stretch it, it takes your clip a bit further and that's pretty much what slide fishing and slide baiting is all about now the advantages of this obviously you can get bigger baits much further that's the whole purpose of sliding depending where you put the sinker some guys fortunate they can do 200 meters up to 200 meters but you get it as far as what you want it then and you put the size bait you want we've slid baits up to 10 15 kilos but ideally you don't want to go over a four kilo three kilo dead bait because that's very tough to slide depending on the water water being calm here you can get away yell point 
but of the beaches you'll really struggle. So a nice half kilo up to a kilo bait of the beaches and then live bait is quite easy. There you can go up to a 10 kilo fish, hook it and it's, it will swim out. However, it could pick up your sinker out there. So what you'll do is you make the sinker snoot a bit longer because remember you're hooking it onto the ring. So you can put a two, three meter on there, which keeps your sinker a bit better anchored when you've got a bigger fish sliding out. Well guys, let's hope that the bites come as, as nice and smooth as what slide fishing came and the sliding of that bait out. Oh, no way. There's the first bite. Alright guys, uh, had a good pull there. It screamed off and it ran for about, I don't know, 20, 30 meters and it just stopped. I suspect it possibly could be a mackerel because that's what they do sometimes. If they don't find the hook, they grab it, they speed off and then they either chomp the bait or they miss the hooks or something like that. So I'm going to leave the bait for about another 5 or 10 minutes. Hopefully it's still there and uh, we'll check it just now. Yeah, yeah. A bit of it squashed. There. Yes. There. The meat gets squashed yeah. a bit. The live dart out here at the moment and hopefully we can get onto a Spanish Mac or a big GT. Just been picked up. Um, not too sure as of yet what is on. Um, we've tightened up the drag and looks like he's set and hooked. So let's see where we are, see if we can turn them at any stage. We've still got a good amount of line on, so we should be in for a, a good fight. Hopefully not too long. At this stage, not too sure what it is. We're not getting any head shakes or anything. We've had to come to the top of the headland. Um, to control the fish a bit more because um, if he's going to run he's going to run around the headland at least from this height um, we have the ability oh, he's taking a lot more at the moment um, we have the ability to now turn him and land him safely on either beach um, either left or right okay guys so uh this is what it's about. Don's onto a really, really good fish. We suspect it could be a tiger. Uh, very slow and strong, sitting out there in the deep. So we're doing some extreme mountain climbing here to try and get some height in the fish. Uh, Don's back is aching, yeah. arms are sore. So I think we're still gonna be busy with this fish for quite some time and obviously, this is what it's about guys, it's strategic, you gotta start off play the game with the fish and eventually hope that it goes in the right direction. There is a beach around the corner of the headlands there, we're hoping to take him around the corner. If not, if he goes to the right hand side of the headlands, there is a small beach, probably 50 meters, that we possibly can land the fish. So, uh, yeah, let's hope for Don's sake yeah. that we get him in the right spot and we land him. Alright guys, the one that got away, uh, unfortunately, yeah, we um, yeah, we fought, fought it along and hard and um, it started going around the headland over there um, and then they, down there, if you have a look, there's a couple of uh, recreational fishermen, um, unfortunately they were um, casting small baits for dart and two of them ended up going over our line. Yeah, it was a sad end to a good fish. I think it was a really big fish. It was a really big tiger. Guys, it's uh, going see but unfortunately to the left which is a problem you need to get over this hill in the back to 
to take it there. So what I've done, I've released the spool. Now in theory how this works, if you put a lot of pressure, a fish is going left, he'll carry on going left. Unless it's small enough for you to turn it. But uh, if you give him the impression that uh, the tension's gone, they'll a lot of times turn direction. So let's just see if it's going to do that. See, it didn't take a hell of a lot of line. But it had a long tail, or it looked like a long tail thrashing there on the surface. Still going the same direction. Deep sea. Okay, let's hold it on and see what it does. Tighten it up a bit and see. But also by giving it line and letting it go further, you've got options. Um, if I have to go up there and it's far out, it's safe. But if you bring it straight in as you hook it, and that fish then goes around, you're probably going to lose it. And that's a difference uh, of uh, some success stories and less success. Because there's always the big risk, especially when you're close to reef or rocks, for a fish to cut you off in this area. You know, you've also got the risk of a bigger, bigger fish coming to eat that one. So you don't want to fight it too long. But we'll see what it does. Dorian's gonna attempt to catch his live bait in the pool. It's a blue fin. Fish is just hanging. One spot I wanted to decide, either right or left. I thought it was going left, so we're way up. On top here. Spectacular view. From top here yesterday, so put a manta ray, uh, everything. We can get a bit of sun, we can see him. How awesome is this? Fishing with a view, <laughs> not any view. Yeah, it's been up and down. The rocks. We're on a small little beach with marginal uh, place to land it but it's probably our best option right now okay try and do it Awesome experience. I know the guys are getting them on the drones in South Africa and you're in there on the road in line. But that was the funniest fight from the start, from the bite. I couldn't figure it out. It ate me like a grey nurse or a ragged tooth as we know it. And uh, then it just hung. It hangs. It doesn't take off fast. It will take 10, 20 meters of line at a time. Um, not a big one. We'll take the measurements see what it was but I reckon about 50 60 somewhere there not sure what what the size to weight ratio or measurement to weight ratio is for the tiger but no better place to catch it with Kingfisher Australia um, really made it an awesome experience so far for us these guys really go out of their way so to all the Australians mate make your way to Kingfisher you ought to catch some big sharks they've got to tackle slide baiting and uh, come right here to, to, to the island. Oh, there's lots of spots, I'm sure, in Australia where you guys get similar type of fishing. <laughs>